Good, so um, good afternoon, and uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Julian Brooks, and I am Senior Curator of Drawings here at the J. Paul Getty Museum. And I'd like to start with an acknowledgement. Um, I'd like to acknowledge our presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Gabrielino Tongva, Tataviam, and Chumash peoples. I pay respect to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of these groups, past, present, and emerging. And welcome to everyone here in, in person, and welcome to the many more watching online. So let's get this party started. Maybe. So that was one of 11 songs that were presented in a concert uh, in 2007 here at the Getty Museum. And I promised that by the end of the afternoon, all this talk of baskets and stones will make sense, I promise. So these 11 songs were written in response to, inspired by um, a series of drawings here at the J. Paul Getty Museum. Um, the 20 drawings, I'm showing you 12 here, and they show the life of Tadeo Zuccaro, the early life of the Renaissance artist Tadeo Zuccaro. And it's this amazing story that shows his move to Rome, the hardships he suffered, rejection, um, sickness, and just difficulties and hardship, adversity, and his eventual success. And these drawings were actually made by Federico, Zucca, Federico Zuccaro, his younger brother, by about 11 years. And Federico made this whole series of drawings dedicated to his, his older brother in a very charming fashion, telling the story. And you may notice that these drawings are um, a slightly odd shape. Uh, you can take your pick, dumbbells, dog bones, Something like that. And that's because they were intended as decorations for Federico's house in Rome. And if you visited Federico's house in Rome today, you might remember it, given that this is one of the doorways. So this was, um, the drawings were made in about 1595 to decorate his house. Um, Federico was himself a very successful artist and he intended his house when he died to be a refuge for young artists coming to Rome so that they didn't have to go through the trials and tribulations that his older brother went through. And this house was then, the, the plan was to decorate them with paintings made from these drawings. In the end, it never happened. And so you won't find them there. The building is now actually a, um, an art historical library called the Biblioteca Herziana and um, still has frescoes in the ceiling, but none that relate to the, the drawings we're looking at today. So the story starts with Tadeo Zuccaro, and the year is about 1544, 
And you see him here, just center right, um, and he's leaving his hometown of Sant'Angelo and Vado on the right-hand side, the Adriatic coast of Italy. And he's trained with his father, who was an artist, and with another local painter. But at age 14, he decides he wants to go and see if he can make it in the big city, and he heads off to Rome. And you see him here, the father is on the left and not sure about him going, and the mother sort of holds him back and says, okay, you know, let him go. And Tadeo, you can see, is accompanied by two guardian angels. So you know it's gonna work out all right. And one of the charming things about this series is that you can see um, in the hem of Tadeo's cloak, it actually show, it has his name, Tadeo. And then you can see clinging to the skirts of his mother is Federico there, who also annotates himself, Federico. And he was, as I say, he was about 11 years younger than, than, um, than Tadeo. And he sort of includes himself. The artist who draw these, drew these drawings included himself in this series. So Tadeo makes his way to Rome. And he's greeted there by um, Minerva Pallas Athene, who shows him the prospect of Rome. And there he is. But we know that it's going to be difficult because when he actually gets to Rome, to the city gate, he's met by Toil, um, who's the, the gaunt figure straight ahead of him, servitude and hardship. And then there's an ox and an ass down there representing obedience and patience. So you know it's going to be a difficult time for him in Rome. And in the background is the, the dome of St. Peter's that's being built um, as, as this is happening. And Tadeo, um, his ace card on arriving in Rome was that he had a cousin there. And he's like, okay, I've got a cousin in Rome. I've got a letter of introduction. This is going to you know, be my ticket. He's going to take me in as an assistant, an apprentice, and I can, you know, um, I'll learn the trade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is Francesco San, Il Sant'Angelo on the right. And you can see what's happening. I mean, I love this drawing for the way that you have this amazing juxtaposition of, of poses. Tadeo on the left, who's presenting his letter of introduction, hopeful, you know, hoping for something. And then on the right, Francesco il Sant'Angelo, who's just dismissing him out of hand and um, just saying, I'm too busy, it's not, not happening. And the year is 1544. It's a tough time in Rome. Uh, the city was sacked by imperial troops in 1527, and it's just beginning to get back on its feet as a center for art patronage. And so on some level, it's, it's understandable that Francesco couldn't take um, Tadeo on as a... Um, as an apprentice. So a lot of these drawings you'll see are in this historiated narrative form, in which case um, you see several, several little Tadeos going across the series. So we see him turn away, we see him here um, crying as he goes down the steps in despair. You know, his big, what he thought was gonna be his big break, his big chance is not working out. And then we see him in the back you know, he doesn't give up. He's inspired by um, seeing one of the many, many painted murals that existed in Rome at that time. And we see him just sketching it, copying it. And if you yourself happen to be in Rome and want to see this particular mural, bits of it are actually still there. It's the Palazzo Ricci. And there are just one or two bits that still remain. Not very much, but, you know, more than most. So Tadeo does eventually get an apprenticeship. And um, it's with an artist called Giovanni Pietro Piero um, Calabrese, who we see here at bottom left. And we see Tadeo twice. We see him holding a lamp on the left-hand side, and then we see him in the back um, grinding colors. And this was just such a tough time for him because you know, normally the whole deal with an apprenticeship is that, sure, during the day you're you know, you're, you're working hard, grinding paint colors, helping your master, but you're also trying, you know, learning the, the skill of painting and they're teaching you. And, you know, you're not meant to be grinding colors, you know, in the evening as well. 
And I just love all the details of this scene. I love the way that the, um, the light is constructed. So you have, for instance, we can see that Tadeo on the left, um, well, sorry, uh, we can see, let's see. So we see he's mistreated. He's not getting what he wants out of the apprenticeship. And even worse, they're, they're mistreating him, they're starving him, they're not giving him enough food. And the food is kept in a basket, hung from the top of the, the room. And there's a little bell attached so that if Tadeo tries to help himself to some food, the bell's gonna ring and they're gonna you know, be onto him. Um, and the inscription there in Italian says, you know, at the sounds of the bell, I live with what comes. And it apparently wasn't that unusual to keep food in a basket suspended from the ceiling. You know, a good way of keeping it out of the reach of mice or ants or whatever. But, you know, you don't attach a bell to it. So, poor little Tadeo, you know, he can't, he's, he's, he's starved and there's the food at the top of the, top of the room. Um, but more than that, he's actually, um, his, his physical nourishment is equated by the fact that he's also denied the, the spiritual nourishment, the, the artistic nourishment that he wants. Because his master, the Calabrese, has drawings by Raphael. And all Tadeo wants to do is to study them. And you can see here, his master Calabrese is looking at the drawings and he forces, um, he has Tadeo holding the lamp so he can see them, but he forces Tadeo to uh, avert his gaze so he can't see them even. He was that mean. And so you see the little inscription next to Tadeo here says, you, you deprive me of, of, of that which I desire most which is to study these, these drawings and to, to learn the artistic um, profession. And then I love this detail where you have the Calabrese's wife sitting by the fire, sort of toasting her feet. He's busy grinding colors at the back of the room. And then sat on the ledge of the window is this, this cat. And it's just such an amazing sort of domestic scene in, in, in so many ways. So during the daytime, um, Tadeo is sent on errands, he's sent to do the shopping, um, go and fetch things. And again, we see him several times in this particular scene. We see him heading off with his basket to get the groceries. But he's still making the most of his time and trying to you know, triumph against the hardship that is being inflicted on him. So you see him in the background there. He's studying, one again, one of these miraculous um, <clears throat> facades that were painted, mainly by artists called Polidoro and Maturino. And they were the glory of Rome, and they were why a lot of people went to study in Rome. And of course, they're freely accessible, so it's not like you need an invitation or some special permission to go and see them. So it's said that um, Tadeo, when he, he was, he would go out on his errands, he would admire these facades, and then he would come back, and you see him in the front drawing with a twig on the, the block where he's been grinding colors, and he would draw in the colored paints the scenes that he had seen uh, painted by Polidoro and Maturino. And then at the end of the day, there he is, you know, he goes up to his room, this sort of eerie loft, and he's denied even a little bit of um, uh, oil for a lamp to draw by, to practice his sketching. And so we see him here drawing by moonlight, and you see him one slipper on, one slipper off, He's standing by the window to get the best of the light. He's drawn on the shutters as well. And it's just this amazing poetic scene. And one of the things I love about this series that Federico Zuccaro drew is just the poetic nature with which he represents all of these, these scenes. And needless to say, this, of the 11 songs that, that um, were performed in 2007, it's a scene like this that really triggers, of course, the poetic imagination. And um, this was the subject of uh, a song by Tom Freund called Little Room of Mine. I hope that the moon shines bright tonight On this little room of mine high up in the sky Look around, be mine. 
it always seems such a tragedy to fade out these songs. I mean, they're so beautiful. And, and I would say that they're all available on Spotify or your preferred streaming service. So do, do go back and, um, and look them up. And we're going to play a few clips. And then um, our sort of grand finale is we actually have a live performance um, by Lily Wilson here in the, um, here in the auditorium. So back to Dia Tadeo, you know, he's stuck with this sort of dead-end apprenticeship. Um, he's an abusive painter, Calabrese. And, you know, he's not learning the art of painting. He's barely given time to draw, to sketch how he's going to learn. And, you know, all the time he's just been doing household errands and jobs that an apprentice wouldn't normally be expected to do. And you see in this drawing how he's, um, you know, he's making the bed at the left. Um, he's bringing water up from the cellar, wood up from the cellar for the fire. He's lighting the fire on the right for the stove, even doing the cooking, standing at the stove too. And in the middle of it all is the Calabrese's wife, who doesn't help at all. And it's just sort of sat there. And the, the inscription next to her says, Infingard ed, ed epoco, you know, lazy and good for nothing. Eventually, Taddeo realizes that it's just not going to work. With him and Calabrese, he's learning nothing, he's working hard, but, you know, that's not what he's there for, you know. So he decides he's better off on his own and makes the difficult decision to go out and just study on his own, take day work when he can pick it up. And so we see him here sketching after an antique torso and sketching in the background, again, from some of these... Uh, the murals that we see um, that were all over Rome in the period. Maybe up to 200 buildings had murals on the front. And one of the, <coughs> excuse me, one of the scenes he loved painting or drawing the most was the Farnesina, the Villa Farnesina, in which there were frescoes by Raphael in the ceiling. And so we see him here, another moonlit scene um, so beautifully re represented and um, with Tadeo seated at the bottom looking up and um, uh, sketching these uh, frescoes by Raphael. And the account written by Giorgio Vasari, which tells us a lot about um, Tadeo's life and about all these events that we're talking about, um, talks about how, you know, when, when, Federic, when Tadeo was um, studying Raphael and in this period of his life, he didn't have anywhere to sleep often. So he would just fall asleep right there and then. And you see him here fast asleep in the background in the loggia of the Villa Farnesina. And he was just, you know, he was basically homeless and sleeping where he could, um, trying to catch a break whenever he could. But the downside is he, he caught a fever. He became ill, um, the sleeping rough, um, took its toll. He became very ill, feverish. He decided that, you know, he thought he was going to die. And he thought, look, I'm going to go back to try and make the journey back to, um, to Sant'Angelo and Vado, back to his parents to, um, to at least get some comfort there. So, you know, it's not working out in Rome. He starts setting out to go back um, to Sant'Angelo and Vado. And you see him here four times in the narrative. So you see, on the left, you see him fast asleep by a tree. And you see this wonderful, like, dream bubble <laughs> over the top, where he's dreaming of all the facades, all the beautiful things he's seen in Rome. And then he wakes up, and he's so delirious that he has a hallucination that all the stones in the river are actually painted by his hero, Polidoro de Caravaggio. They're, they're painted like the facades of these buildings. And so they can say that he, he gathered up the most precious, the most beautiful stones, and put them in his backpack, and set off with them, carried them home to Sant'Angelo and Vado. And of course, the stones weren't painted at all. They're just, this is a hallucination. That's just, he's imagining it all. So he arrives home. And you can see him here, you know, greeted by his mother and father. And he's like, hey, look, I brought a sack of the most beautiful painted stones. And his parents are like, oh, yeah, OK. Um, we see that there's, you know, yeah, not feeling so well. And you see on the left here, he's put to bed. And, um, and you can see again Federico on the left-hand side there, the little child by, um, by the bed there. 
is Federico represents himself, and he puts his little name there, Federico Zucchero. And this incident um, uh, inspired a song by, um, by Sarah Stanley and, um, uh, called Sack of Stones. Again, Spotify your f or your favorite streaming service, you know, it's all there. So um, one of the motifs that we see several times through the series, actually, is um, the motif of the Zuccaro family. And this is very distinctive. You see it here. Um, it's flanked by uh, a figure of faith on the left with the little dog at the right at, at the far left. And then um, a figure of hope on the right. And in the center is the Zucchero um, emblem. So we have a, a sugar cone or sugar loaf in the middle, Zucchero, sugar. Zuc and that, you know, the cone or the loaf is how sugar was sold uh, in the period and, and beyond. And then it's adorned with fiori di zucca, uh, zucchini flowers. And um, so that's the, the Zucchero emblem. Has, has, and this recurs again and again in, in the decorations for, the, um, for Federico Zucchero's house in, house in Rome. So Tadeo now, you know, he's been nursed back to health at home. He decides, you know, he's not going to give up. He's going to get back to Rome. And so he makes the journey back to Rome. And here we see him. It's a much more felicitous um, entry to Rome this time. He's escorted by drawing, disegno, and spirit. And in the far background, the three graces um, are greeting him. So clearly a more auspicious um, uh, arrival in the city. And he sets to work. We know he was um, working again day to day, but he was also um, spending time studying, being inspired by all the, um, the, the amazing works of art that were around him. And this series, is, this series of drawings is incredibly famous among art historians because of its representation of the young artist studying and copying in Rome, being inspired by uh, antiquities here in this case, you know, the Apollo Belvedere at left, the Laocco on at right. And these are all in the Vatican Belvedere and being, um, being studied by Tadeo. And so you just see them again and again in all the literature and art history of how the young artist would, would study, study this way. And this drawing in particular is, is extremely famous. So we see Tadeo, he's visibly a little older here and sketching. And um, we see him also here sketching uh, Michelangelo's Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel. And again, visibly older than the young, the young man that had left Rome uh, four years before in 1544. And we see him here um, sketching the Last Judgment and he's, he's sketching with a pen, he has ink and food and rolled up paper at his, um, at his feet. And then the climax of the series is this extraordinary drawing um, of him, of uh, Tadeo Zuccaro painting the facade of the Palazzo Mattei. And it's recorded that after maybe a year again in Rome, he was studying, he was working, he was um, working in particular in a place called the Castel Sant'Angelo, along with other fellow artists, and clearly making a bit of a reputation himself slowly, slowly, and um, the nobleman, Jacopo Mattei, wanted to decorate the facade of his, his palazzo. And so he, um, he, he, he entrusts um, Tadeo to do the task. 
But he says, look, you know, you're 18 years old. I'm not sure you can really handle this big commission. Just do one um, section and then we'll see where we are, you know, a trial. So Tadeo paints the trial. And it was said, uh, Giorgio Vasari, um, who records all this, says, you know, that Jacopo Matteo was not only satisfied, but stupefied by the result. He was, you know, thrilled. So we see here, this is, you know, Tadeo's big break at the age of 18, finally his first big commission to paint the facade of the Palazzo Matteo. And all the accounts say that it was, um, you know, lauded uh, among the people of Rome. You see here two angels flying at the top, trumpeting the fame of the commission. And um, we see Tadeo there up on the scaffolding uh, on the side of the building. And it's a wonderful representation of this old wooden scaffolding that you would have had. Um, and it's pretty crowded there on the scaffolding because he not only has um, uh, pride and spirit with him, but also the three graces, just for good measure. So they're, they're all there, you know, and as he paints with his long brush on the, on the wall. And you can see also at the top of this drawing, um, the angel uh, who has the, is trumpeting the fame, um, the, the trumpet, Federico Zucchero has in the drawing just made a pentimento. He's just changed the, um, the angle of the trumpet there too. And the more you look at the drawings, the more you see this at bottom left, you see um, Michelangelo, Michelangelo Buonarroti, who was then the year's 1548. We know that Michelangelo went around Rome uh, in his relatively old age um, on a mule, going to see different things and um, going to see, uh, you know, see what was going on. And here Federico shows Michelangelo, you know, looking up at the, the facade. But I think he, he probably thought it was undignified to show Michelangelo on a mule. So we see here Michelangelo, you know, he's been upgraded to a horse, like a proper real horse. So, so Michelangelo there. And then at the right-hand side of the scene, we see Giorgio Vasari, who was the, the early artist biographer and who's recording all of this um, in, his, uh, in his lives of the artists. And if you go to Rome to see the Palazzo Mate and see Tadeo's decorations, this is what you'll find. Um, literally nothing, like nothing survives at all. So we can recreate it through a few drawings and that sort of thing, but um, yeah, nothing survives, sadly. One of the nice touches with this final uh, drawing in the series is that Tadeo, um, that, sorry, that Federico puts the figure of a delivery boy here, um, admiring uh, Tadeo and Tadeo's decorations on the facade. And this, of course, harks back to Tadeo himself when he was running errands for the Calabrese's wife, um, you know, stopping, admiring a facade and, and learning from it and being inspired to go on and then become a mural artist himself. So there's this wonderful sense of like ongoing history, a great circle of creativity that, you know, Tadeo learns from somebody, is inspired, goes on to become his own f painter, and creates his own facade that then is an inspiration to other artists. And, you know, this uh, is, I think, the amazing thing about this, this series of drawings, that they do provide this constant inspiration. They, they embody it, but they also sort of represent it too. And we've seen, you know, all of these different um, scenes. We've seen Tadeo going through all the hardship, um, becoming ill, suffering rejection, um, being in this essentially sort of abusive relationship with his, the, um, the person with whom he had an apprenticeship. And in the end, you know, just persevering and the power of perseverance and pushing on. And this is, you know, I think a sort of universal message really for all of us too, you know, that in the face of these things, one just carries on and, you know, what is it they say, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? But I, you know, I feel that these, these drawings do have something for all of us. And I, I would love, you know, to hand it essentially over to you and to, to everyone out there watching on Zoom. Like if, if you have a song, a poem, something written, a drawing, photograph, just if this series of drawings inspires something, just like it inspired all the musicians back in 2007, um, then I'd love to know about it. And do please send details to, to the email address drawings at getty.edu. 
Um, or you can Instagram, you know, use the handle at Getty Museum or the hashtag um, at um, hashtag Getty Zucchero series. Um, and it would just be fascinating and I'd love to see, see what, um, what comes out of it too. And then as a final treat uh, this, this afternoon, we have a performance um, live. You know, isn't it great to have live music back? Like, it's sustain sustained me for so many years on my arrival in LA. And, um, you, know, it, it, uh, you know, we all missed it during the pandemic. So we're thrilled to have Lily Wilson here, along with Mark Brown and Bob Balding, um, to perform Lily's song, By the Light of the Moon. Thank you, Julian. This one was inspired by that slide of Zucchero painting, drawing by the moonlight. I loved that one so much. Sometimes it seems easier just to do what we're told. So much easier than striking out on our own. Oh, what we'll give up for shelter. From the cold, dark night Well, I decided not to give up When they tried to take my light Now I've been drawing By the light of the moon Making friends with the darkness And I'll be leaving here soon I heard what they told me I thought that they held the key I had almost forgotten what it meant to be me I was starving and broken I wandered the halls And then I saw how the moonlight Can break through these walls now I've been drawing by the light of the moon, making friends with the darkness, and I'll be leaving here soon. I was put on this earth to create I will not be held down I've suffered the fear and the hatred I've come way too far to turn back now and I've been drawing by the light of the moon Making friends with the darkness And I'll be leaving here soon Oh, I've been drawing By the light of the moon Making friends with this darkness 
and I'll be leaving here soon by the light of the moon I'll be leaving here soon by the light of the moon 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 Mark Brown and Bob Boldy Thank you